Okay, hey, DadGFN here, and this is just gonna be a quick ramble video because, like, unscripted, and it's just basically because I noticed something rather funny and interesting when I was looking through some old notes of mine, and it's it just made me realize just something that I've been thinking about for a while, and just, it just proves a point, which is, um, long story short, Ford is kind of a big idiot, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've probably offended a lot of Ford, Ford fangirls by saying that, but let's just put it this way. Ford is a genius. He's like a really smart guy, of course. He, he has the book smarts. But what he doesn't have, oftentimes, is common sense and street smarts. And that's been proven many times in the show, such as when, you know... Uh, in the in uh, Boss Mabel when you know Dipper Mabel trying to defeat the Gremlin, the way that Ford wrote how to defeat the Gremlin really ruined up Dipper and Mabel's attempts to defeat it because you know the way he wrote the sentence just was stupid. Uh, got it. When fighting a Gremlin, use water <laughs> only as a last resort, as water will make him much much scarier. <laughs> Who writes sentences like that? And there's been other occasions like you know Ford's lack of common sense of like. Um, you know, you probably shouldn't give kids weapons and stuff like that. But this thing I discovered in when I was looking through some old Journal 3 uh, listings is just absolutely hilarious. And okay, let, okay, I'm just going to shut up and explain what it is. Long story short, as we know in the show, after Bill betrays Ford, he goes around and starts burying the journals and figuring out a plan to defeat Bill. And what we see in the show is that he buried Journal 2 and he buried Journal 3. And then his plan was to give Journal 1 to Stan to take it as far away from Gravity Falls as possible. And of course the fight breaks out and we basically see it, how that all plays out. And even in Journal 3, you notice something rather, you notice he explains that. He, like I have Journal 3 here with me, so if, apologies about the pages. Like the map that he has of the hiding places for Journal 2 show that he buried it next to the Gravity Falls Elementary School, which he mentions that I doubt there will ever be a child clever or cunning enough to discover it, which we all know how that went. However, what else he mentions is that, of course, he plans to have, he, he has picked another place in the woods for this volume, which is Journal 3. But when you look at the photos, he lists at the bottom of it Journal 1, which begins to imply to me that, okay, that's kind of weird. Why would Ford have a planned location for Journal 1 when his idea is to give it to Stan, who would probably his, according to him would you know bury it somewhere like where he probably wouldn't know so why does he have journal one's hiding spot already listed out there which obviously gets me to assume that he meant journal three was supposed to be that book so which is kind of weird there however here's the thing a couple of years ago i was given access to an imgur file which contains every single image of the blacklight pages in journal three special edition so long story short, there was a long time ago a Tumblr page that had all the Journal 3 um, images, like the Blacklight pages posted, but the quality of that Tumblr blog was not the best. Like, no no shade on the creator of that Tumblr post because they were very valuable back in the day because they were one of the only people who shared everything that was in Journal 3 Special Edition, but the images were not the best quality. However, this Imgur file, which was shared, which was made around the same time, but I didn't realize till just recently, it has much higher quality images of the black and black light pages, and I'll link them all in the description. But long story short, when you get to the exact same page in Journal Three Special Edition, where Ford mentions the hiding place of the journals, and he shines the black light over it, you'll see that he explains there what every single journal contains and what each description of the journals is. So journal one, he says, it describes my first three years in Gravity Falls, focuses on mythical beasts, geographic anomalies, and a 30 hour arm wrestle match with a very annoying unicorn. Gee, I wonder what unicorn he was arm wrestling. I have no idea, right? Anyways, after that, he then explains what's in journal two, which really gets me really intrigued. He basically says, it's the most dangerous journal. It, con it contains curses, incantations, plus dark power became an obsession in this volume. Basically, that's what he was obsessed with in putting into it. He It describes the hiding place of the mystic amulet, which is the amulet, of course, Gideon has in the hand of Rocks the Mabel. And he mentioned that I buried the, am the amulet once I learned that it corrupts your soul and whitens your hair, which basically explains what Gideon is like. So basically... 
Journal 2 contains all of that, and of course, as we know from the show, it also contains the summoning ritual for Bill Cipher, because that's how Bill, uh, Gideon summons Bill in Dreamscapers. So we know that that's in Journal 2. Um, also, Alex mentioned in a tweet once when someone asked him why there's never going to be a Journal 1 and 2, is that Journal 1 and 2 mainly are for labeling mushroom spores alone in his basement, and it might not be as interesting as 3. The real reason, of course, why there will never be a Journal 1 and 2 is because there's just not enough information and info out there to fit even one new edition of the journals, let alone 2. So Alex would have to create a bunch of like 270 pages worth of info for Gravity Falls lore and stuff, which remember, Journal 1 and 2 will not contain any further stuff like Journal 3 did. So it will be much harder to make those books, which is why there'll never be an official Journal 1 or 2. And then finally, he mentions what Journal 3 is about. And it's he mentions this quote, the volume I hold in my hands describes my embarrassing defeat at the hands of Bill and the loss of my very sanity. It also, also contains some pretty good drawings of a platypus, which, you know, a platypus. Barry the platypus! Um, will soon be bestowed upon S and hidden at the ends of the earth, I hope. And this, this entire sentence here, that just kind of surprised me. Basically, Ford is saying that it basically confirms what I noticed in that image, in the actual Journal 3. Apparently, Ford wanted Stan to take Journal 3 instead of Journal 1. So why did Ford give Stan Journal 1 to hide? Why not give him Journal 3? Also something else that I noticed that was kind of surprising about this all is that alongside giving Stan the wrong journal, it appears, Ford also kind of was an idiot in terms of what journal he decided to give to Stan to take away from Gravity Falls. Because Journal 1 and 3, by comparison, are not too dangerous. I mean, both journals contain information that's important, like Journal 1 talks about the unicorns and stuff, and Journal 3 contains information about Ford's defeat with Bill, but neither of them really contain any suspicious information or worrying information. They don't contain anything that was worrisome. Like, Journal 3, of course, we know contains, like, the spell to get into a uh, mindscape that, you know, Ford mentions that, you know, we see in Dreamscapers, but beyond that, there isn't really anything dangerous in Journal 3. The journal with the most danger, as it turns out, is Journal 2, and we all know who Journal 2 ended up in the hands of. So what this basically gets me wondering is why didn't Ford decide to give Stan Journal 2 to go and bury somewhere else beyond Gravity Falls? Because remember, if it was beyond Gravity Falls, it would be beyond the reach of Bill because Bill would not be able to get to Journal 2 because he would he would need to be inside someone's body to like, you know, physical form to destroy the journals as we saw in, in Sock Opera. And he wouldn't be able to do that given the weirdness magnetism field, so he wouldn't be able to get out of Gravity Falls either. So realistically speaking, journal number two should have been the journal that Ford gave to Stan to go and disappear from. But instead he gave him journal one, which by comparison is the least dangerous journal of the three. Because all it contains is, you know, mushrooms and mythical beasts and arm wrestle L's that he took. So it doesn't contain anything super dangerous. And yet because of the fact that he gave it to Stan to bury, and we all know how that ended up going, it technically means that because Stan kept journal number one in the basement of the mystery shack where he was using it to try and reactivate the portal, that journal never went out of that port that room. You see what I mean by that? Basically, because he never took that journal out of the basement, it never left the mystery shack, and it never left the confines of that that whole safe bubble of protection that the journal would be in. The only dangerous time that the journal ever got was after Ford came back and it was out in the open again. So that entire time, for those 30 years that Ford was gone, Journal 1, the least dangerous journal, was the most well protected. Meanwhile, Journal 2, which is the most dangerous journal, it was buried r literally right next to a, a, a fucking elementary school. Even if a kid didn't find Journal 2, someone else probably would have eventually. Like, what was Ford thinking when he decided to bury this journal next to an elementary school? Did he think like, oh, some kid finds a journal and he's like, hey, I found this book. And then the teachers are like, ah, that's funny, Billy. You, um, you just did that. Nice drawing. Like, no, of course. Gideon found Journal 2 and we all know what he did with Journal 2. 
Ford should not have buried that journal so close to development site. Like, the only reason, even Journal Three was found much hard was much harder to find. Like Stan couldn't find it, and the only reason Dipper found it was because like, he got super lucky when he was like buried, putting those signposts up. Like Journal Three was even hidden better than Journal Two. So the most dangerous journal was the most easiest to find. That's what I always find so funny now that I look now that I've figured this out. Like it just further proves my ever obvious point that here that Ford is a genius, but he's also the biggest idiot in the show. Like he is such a dumbass. Like this guy, he 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 could win a Nobel Prize, but he decides to bury his most dangerous journal containing information about how to summon a dream demon right next to an elementary school. Like, the point I'm trying to make here is he should have left that journal as the one to take, to give to Stan to take away from Gravity Falls, but instead he chose the least dangerous journal to give to him. So, that's just, that's just, is it, I, it, just blo it just blows my mind that Ford picked the most dangerous journal to be kept in this town while the most least dangerous journal should have been taken away. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say in this video. And, yeah, Ford is a big idiot. But hey, that's why we love him, right? He, he wouldn't be Stanford Pines without that stupidity. That's what makes him different to all the other idiots, geniuses out there in the show and why he's probably still obsessed by so many fangirls and do the whole dating sim about him. <laughs> I still gotta finish that game one day. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this rambling video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, bye.